Hello and welcome to another episode. It occurs to me that um, we might be able to use car scanner and OBD. That's an OBD and VPeak adapter, which I'm currently using. I'll put the link in the description uh, to scan before I go on a long journey in a few weeks uh, on holiday for the diagnostic trouble code of P1A9096, which is a prequel, a pre-warning to your ICCU failure. Uh, and there's also a bunch of other stuff you can look at inside uh, the ICCU with car scanner. So uh, in conjunction with that OBD adapter, which is plugged in underneath the fuse box, um, on, a, on an EV9, it's just to the, to the left of the fuse box, but you have to go under the dash to get at it. I'm going to use my Carling kit CPC200 for Android and plug that in and you'll see it on my infotainment screen while I'm doing. So I'm just gonna plug all that in. Right, first things first, I'll open up car scanner. My adapters are already plugged in. Mine's set to auto connect. And that loads up the, the last dashboard I had opened. Right, come back to that. So I'm gonna come back out of here, press back. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to sh is how to scan for the DTCs, the the Diagnostic Trouble Code for the ICCU, which is it's a special warning code which you've got to look for. So press on Diagnostic Trouble Codes, and then you only need to select. So if you deselect on the right, you only need to select a particular unit. It makes this a whole lot quicker. So just that one, which is full WD on board charge, a hybrid EV, that one, and then read. No DTCs found. That's good. Means we're okay at the moment. Right, let's get on back. Next thing I'm going to show you is how to check your ECU identifiers. This can tell you the version number of the ICCU, the hardware and software versions, and build dates, so and un check everything. And scroll back down to full WD onboard charger again. And then read. Now mine was updated last year with the last ICCU update, so that ECV1E3-IES 12R000, that is what I call version 12. I think in America they had version 11, but in the EU and UK we got version 12. And the versions come out for the Ionic 5 and Ionic 6 in the States so far is version 13. In the dashboards, there are various things you can look at in the ICCU. So I'm going to go back to the first screen once it's reloaded. Come back to that. For the most part, I've normally got this on this when I'm traveling. It's, it's all the batteries and temperatures of the batteries and real state of charge of the BMS. Now I'm focusing more on the ICCU problems. Um, I found up this other screen, which if you click at the top there, press again, you get the list up. And if you scroll down, you can see you've got 12 volt battery DC to DC, the LCD converter, which is the problem component that blows in the ICCUs that stops the 12 volt battery charging. Now in settings, I've modified that top right hand corner one to the to the electric water pump uh, sensor so so um, the rotation speed so you know that that's running also if you've got it on the screen it definitely records in the data for you to look at graphs which i'll show you in a bit so you you've got your 12 volt battery voltage you've got your current uh, low low voltage dc temperature which is 17 and your electronic water pump. So my question was, how how could you modify your behavior of the car to try and keep that LDC temperature down? Because um, that gets to a really high temperature that could add to the problems of the ICCU failure, according to the documents we're reading from Hyundai. 
but I think whatever is happening happens very suddenly. So um, I don't know the value of seeing all this little gif because when it goes, you hear the fuse pop under the back seat and that's your first warning. And I don't know how long you get before you get the warnings on the dash, uh, about 12 volt. But again, I still thought it was worth looking at things such as charging and, and slowing down charging rates and also your vehicle to load usage to see what impact they have on this LDC temperature. Okay, so this first one is just, I tried charging at 60%, which is um, 4.5 kilowatts. You can actually see it charging at 60% uh, charge rate. It, it Temperature goes up to 49 Celsius, and that's when the electric water pump first kicks in. And then after it's been awoken, it seems to kick in at lower temperatures. And then in this next one, I, I changed from 60% charge rate up to 90% charge rate. Um, see, it maintains it at 35, and then it kick, kicks the electric water pump on, and knocks it back down to 30. And then when I step the charge rate up to 90%, you can see that it, uh, it, 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 the peak gets higher. Um, and, um, 7 kilowatts is going to be higher than that, and probably 11 kilowatts. 0.5 kilowatts it's going to be higher than that do you know what causes the hottest ldc temperature you'd be surprised to know what i found if you plug in the vehicle to load adapter and just leave it with nothing attached it goes up to 40 um without it if you haven't got the, the button activated if you then turn on the current with nothing attached it, it starts to rise and if you've got something attached i did a test last night when i was just running probably 300 kilowatts between five o'clock till about 11. Well, the graphs, the graph actually says 25 past when I first started up to 22.35. The temperature peaks at 64 Celsius. I've got one single blip from the electric water pump and nothing all night. So that actually stays at 64 Celsius. So that's the highest uh, DC to DC converter temperature you that I seem to be able to get. I mean, I've not tested it 11 kilowatt charging, but it's weird that it doesn't even attempt to cool down the vehicle to load sessions if you're running it for a few hours. And the temperature does slowly build from what I can see, but it, but it just maintains 64. So I find that strange. I'm in a reg I'm a, I'm a regular uh, vehicle to load user um, and I'm, you know I've never had a problem touch wood in the whole of the two and a bit years I've had this car so I hope that's not related to the failures but I'm sure other people don't bother with vehicle to load and just get ICCU failures in conclusion I think the graphs show that the lower the current you charge the car with the lower the impact on the low voltage DC converter and also the vehicle to load is the highest temperature I've seen on the low voltage DC converter. But because it's a slow buildup, it may have less of an impact on the ICCU failures. But who really knows? Anyway, I hope you find this useful. Thank you for watching.